Hello everybody, welcome back to your channel Echo Engineering. In the previous video, we tried to use some labels to predict whether the next candle will be closed in the higher price in comparison with the current candle or in the lower price. So it was just a true and false. The model, the data model would have predict for us true when the prediction was that the next candle will be closed in the higher price and it was false when the prediction was that the next candle will close in the lower price. We call this machine learning modeling classification. In this video, we want to do a regression data modeling and the purpose is to use the same features to predict the price of next candle. We want to see what will be the price, not just a true and false uh, return, but a number. This number, this type of data modeling is called regression. We have some features like high, low, open of the candle, close of the candle, RSI indicator, MACD indicator, Bullinger band, MFI, and moving averages. And by using these features, we want to predict a number, in this case, the next week price. And it is adjusted close, not just the close that we have here, but the adjusted close. But before going deeply inside the code, please, if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, leave me a comment. And if you like the video, please do not forget to hit the like button. So by doing so, you will help us to be introduced to those who are interested in these topics by YouTube algorithm. If you want to see how accurate an AI can predict the price of Bitcoin, stay with me to the end. The result would be very interesting for you. So uh, here is the code. The first thing that we have to do is to install the libraries that we are using them in this code. The pandas, pandas TA for technical analysis, Y Finance to extract the data, and scikit-learn library for machine learning modeling. Then we import our libraries and we import our pandas as PD, Y Finance as YF, and pandas TA as TA. And then we run it. And then in this line of code, we just download and extract the data for Bitcoin from 2015 to 2023, which each of these intervals would be one week time frame. It means we are looking at the weekly time frame from 2015 to 2023. If I press shift and enter, and then we can, it is downloading and it has completely downloaded the whole data for our Bitcoin and we save it in the data variable. Now this would be our data. The open, high, low, close, adjust close and volume of the Bitcoin for each week for weekly candlesticks. Okay. Now we want to add RSI, MACD, Bullinger band, money flow index, single moving average 20, 50, exponential moving average 20 and 50. To do so, we use technical analysis. We have discussed about them in the video regarding Pandas TA. I will leave you the link here. You can go and watch it. By the way, you can find this code, this notebook in our Telegram channel, which I leave you the link in the descriptions. So here we add the RSI to our data frame. Then we add MACD and then we add Bullinger band. And then we add MFI, single moving average 20, single moving average 50, exponential moving average 20, and exponential moving average 50. We have all, we have ex discussed about all of them and we explained all of them in the technical analysis video and in the previous video too. You can find both of them in the descriptions. And if you don't know how they are working, please go and watch the technical analysis video. So now after we add all of them, if I press shift and enter, we can see them that they will be added. And here, if I now call my data, I can see after the volume, RSI, MACD, Bullinger bands, MFI, single moving averages, and EM, exponential moving averages are added to our data. To this point, we now have our data frame. So now that we have our data frame, we add another column named target to our data frame and it is the adjusted close column this adjusted close it is this adjusted close column which is shifted by minus one it means just it's shifted one upward so in this row for example the adjusted close would be for today but the target would be for the adjusted close of the tomorrow if i run it we will see it together and then we just 
drop the NA data. So if I add it and run it like that, then I can see that the, the target is added and the target for this row is actually corresponded to the adjusted to the adjusted close for tomorrow or in this case it would be next week because the candlesticks are the weekly candlesticks so the target is the price for the next candle and it, again we can see that for example for this row it is the, for the second row the target is the price for the adjust close in the third row like that we have implemented our data and now we have our data to start modeling it we define features and targets the targets the target which is something that our model tries to predict will be saved in target object and our feature would be all columns except our target all of them except our target we just say the data and we add all of the columns to this data now we have our features and target the features would be everything except target and the target would be the adjusted close which is shifted by one after making our features and target data frames we want to use cycle learn model and doing the regression data modeling to predict our target based on these features so we say from cycle learn that model selection import train test split we want to split our test and train feature and target features and target into train and test variables so we will see it together and then from cycle learn linear model we import linear regression before in the previous video we imported classification we wanted to do the classification but in this case we want to we want to predict a price so that would be regression and then from cycular metrics we import mean square error and r2 score we will see what they are doing and then in this line of code we use train test split which we imported here to produce four data frames x trains which is 80 percent of our x axis or features and x test which it would be 20 percent of our features and Y train, which it would be 80% of our target vari variables, values, and Y test, which would be 20% of our target data. So train test feature, it get the features and target and test size would be 20 and consequently the train size would be 80. And we use just random states 42. So you would have, if you use these random state 42 it's like numpy seed and if you use it too you will see the same data that i'm seeing here right now okay and then i run them one by one shift enter and here i can even check our test so for example uh we should run this cell two again and again here we can check our this is our trains it is 308 rows but if we check the feature we can see that it's 385 so 80 percent of these features are now our x strain and x test would be 20 percent of them in this case it would be 77 and for our target how many rows we have here we have 385 rows but for y train it would be 80 percent of these 385 rows which it is 308 uh, y test if we check it we can see that it is 77 rows corresponded to 20 percent of all rows of our target so this is what we checked here too and now we want to define a model a model which it is linear regression because we want to predict a price in this case the price of bitcoin and after defining it we want to fit or train our model based on x train and y train after training them our model tries to find out some relation between our trains data and our x data and y data or our features and our target and after finding out a relationship between them we will use it to pre predict the data that we have never seen in this case we use the test data test data and train data are completely separate with each, with each other our model is not allowed to see the test data during the training that's why we completely separate them by using this test train split 
I run it again, here it would be trained. And here in this line, we define another data frame named YPRED. And it is equal to model that the model which is trained and tries to predict the X tests. In this case, we have our now we have our YPRED, which is our predictions, but we also have our Y test two, which is the real value. Then we want to compare our prediction to the real values to find out how accurate our model predicted the Y, or in this case, and we want to compare Y pred with Y test to find out how accurate our model predicted the price of Bitcoin. Okay, I just copy and paste this one here, run it, run it. This is our Y pred, it's an array, and our Y test. I can add it, for example, here. It's a data frame. We can change this area to a data frame very easy by using the pandas. So now we want to see our YPRED like a series, like what we have for the Y test here. To do so, very simple, we say pd.series. And we want to change this YPRED to a series. If I press Shift and Enter, it will just change the YPRED to a series like that. But the index in this case is 0, 1, 2, 3. But I want it to be exactly the same with what we have here for Y test. And the type should be a date and time. To do so, we say, OK, the index is equal to the Y test index. And if I press Shift and Enter, both of them will be very similar to each other. And we say, OK, Y pred is equal. Or we can say Y pred. Yeah, just Y pred is equal to this one. And from now on, our Y pred and Y test are very similar and with the same format. OK, this is our prediction and this is our the, the real data that happened in the past. Remember that this data, all of them are shuffled and they are not in order because here this is the 28th of January, but this one is 24th of September. So the data are shuffled. But we can see that for the 28th of January, we have predicted that the price of Bitcoin would be 37,635 but the price was actually 44,918. But then for the 24th of September, the prediction was 10,341, but it was 10,668. So we cannot predict exactly the same price that will happen, but we can try to be as close as possible. In the 29th of September, for example, we predicted that the candle would be closed. We predicted that the candle would be closed in 18,779, but it has closed in 19,157. So we can compare them one by one, or we can use some metrics to find out how accurate our model works, and they are called mean square error and R2 score. We use these two metrics to find out how accurate our data is, and you can find out more about them by checking the scikit-learn website, or you can just Google what is the mean square error or what is R2 score. You will find a lot of good information about them. There are some statistical criteria to compare the accuracy of our model. We define a variable named MSE for mean square error, and it is equal to mean square error, which comparison the Y test and Y pred. This is the real target, and this is the predicted target. We want to compare how precise we were. And for R2, we say R2 square Y test Y pred. We added both of them here. If you remember, we said from sklearn metrics, import mean square error and R2 square. Okay. R2 score. Okay. Both of them are added. And if I press shift and enter, we want to we print these two lines of code. Mean square error is equal to this one, and R square is equal to this one mean square this is the mean square error and this is the r square what does it mean okay this is from the cycle learn website i will leave you this link in the notebook you can go and read it it would be very useful i change this part to markdown and you can just go and read it through this link but what does it mean mean square error for mean square error this is the mathematics equation it's equal to sum up the difference between the predicted value and the real value multiplied by two divided by the number of the number of the samples. So ideally, if it is zero, it means that we have the best performance. 
to improve it, we need to have more data. For example, in this case, instead of having 380 rows, we need, for example, 10,000 rows to uh, train our model much better. And along with that, there are different configuration in training our model. When we fit it, we can change them too, which in the next videos when we are trying to explain how the scikit-learn work we will go deeply inside it how to configure our model this is the mean square error and for r2 score there's a table here based on this table we can go and find this r2 here metric r2 score it is called coefficients of determinations and everything is explained here even you can go to wikipedia there is a reference to wikipedia and by clicking on it, we can see this is a this is a concepts of statistics, and everything is defined here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and by doing so, you will help us to be introduced to those who are interested in these topics. Have a good day. Bye.